All right, so let me just first off welcome all you guys to Jupiter. It's always a exciting time. You know, I don't want to dwell on, on 2023, but but obviously getting here and, and starting today, I think we can officially put it in the rearview mirror. And uh, I think like everybody inside, players, coaches, staff, everybody's excited to do that. And so we certainly welcome uh, 2024 in a fresh way. And also, I think when we look back at, at our offseason, we definitely felt like we were able to accomplish a lot. When you look at our 40-man roster, we had uh, 15 new additions, so it's close to 38% turnover of that roster. And obviously, coming off the year we had, we felt that was important. And you know, as we as we be, begin anew today, um, you know, there's going to be some fresh faces. There's going to be real competition in this camp, and um, we think that's healthy. Uh, meeting with the staff yesterday. They're, they're you know, super excited to get this going, and uh, so we're, uh, we're ready to go. A uh, couple quick updates real quick on uh, Middleton. Kanan Middleton uh, will not be at camp today. He's dealing with a stomach bug. And then I also wanted to just touch on Yadier Molina, given the fact that his season at Puerto Rico just ended. We're going to give him a few weeks before he actually reports. So that'll be more of a TBD, but I'll certainly keep you guys abreast when, when that happens. And it'll probably parallel when uh, the minor leagues are going as well, so he can double dip. But at this time, I'll be happy to take questions you from everybody about, but you. No, okay. 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 You talked about veteran, getting veterans who've been there, done it, done there before, um, leadership. How nice was it to see Sonny Gray, you know, very vocal yesterday. Had others watching him, and he said, "You know, I'll take questions from anybody." To to be that vocal leader that you kind of feel like. Yeah, I think uh, that's exactly what we were hoping to see, and and more important, that's who he is. Um, you know, you don't want someone to have to do something they're not comfortable doing, and you know, I think the one thing about him, anybody that got to watch that that bullpen yesterday, he's almost like someone that's just like sort of articulating what he's about to do, what he wants to see done, and he then grades himself, like if he did it well or not. And, and I think like, you know, having someone being able to like talk through something like that, it's a lot easier for other people to learn and how he's thinking. And, and I think that was something that uh, resonated well with our pitchers. Mo, what do you need to find out? Tell yourself, I'd like to find out about this ball club during spring training. Well, I think the biggest thing for us is really going to be our health. Um, and, and I've probably said that for the last 17 years when we open up camp, but that is going to be critical. But when you look at our everyday club, we have a pretty good idea of what that's going to look like. But there are some health question marks as we uh, enter this camp. And the other part of this is going to be, you know, how do we put our bullpen together? What, how does that line up? But I think a lot of this will have an organic feel to it and allow time to uh, uh, happen, and then we'll see where we look like. When you look, when you look at your starting rotation, um, one of the things I think you guys look at is, is depth, because you guys have had to utilize your depth before. Do you guys feel you have enough depth there? <clears throat> Who are your main depth pieces? Look, I think you, you, you always are going to be able to question depth. Um, you're, you're always an injury two away from that being truly tested. But when you look at our, our starting five, we feel pretty confident about that group. But then you also have guys like Libertor and Thompson that I think could do that as well. John Rahm is someone who started games for us last year. So, you know, we do feel like there's, you know, eight, nine, ten names that could fill that void if we needed to, but additional to the five starters. But, you know, I, I hope that our five can go. Mo, with respect to your bullpen, you bolstered the bullpen with as far as setup guys and people who can bridge it to another inning. What about other closers being in the competition? Well, I think we do have other guys that, that can close, but obviously Hells is going to get majority of that. Um, we saw how Romero performed at the end of last year, so we're excited about that. And then Kittredge is someone that's pitched in any inning. So, uh, you know, we do feel that gives us some flexibility. I know you have former Cardinals coming back. Um, and Lance Lynn, Matt Carpenter, what's that going to do? I know Matt Carpenter's already reported here because he wants to be here, see these faces. What does that have to do and think it will help bolster for this offseason? Well, I think it's meaningful that we have people that want to come back here, uh, you know, especially after the year we had. I mean, you could argue that maybe people didn't want to be here. But I do think St. Louis Cardinals are still an attractive place to be. I think Carp and, and Lance are guys that had a great experience when they were here. And uh, they're looking forward to being positive additions as we move forward. Mo, that phrase is something we have used quite a bit, that want to be here. Even with guys who haven't been here before. When did that come on to your desk as something to... That was relevant or important? Yeah. 
uh, probably about 20 years ago. I, I feel like it's like something that has always been, when you look at over the course of those years, like some of the decisions that we've made that have been positive versus negative, there is definitely a common denominator of people that truly want to be here. And uh, as you guys can all imagine, in, in the free agent world, proxy tends to be dollars, right? Or years, and dollars. Uh, whereas, you know, there are times where people just truly want to be a part of this organization, a part of the St. Louis community, and it, it usually ends much better that way. And so when we entered this off season, you know, we didn't go in strictly trying to chase that or look for that, but it was something that was definitely underlying. And when it, and when it showed up early, that's how we were able to get these deals done in the timely fashion that we did. I mean, as you're standing here today, the free agent market is still going, right? right? And we were able to find players that, that wanted to be here and we were able to get them to agree uh, to deals really right around Thanksgiving. One of the ways you used to, not that you used to, but you still may, but approach that was get them here, make them want to be here. It seems like that kind of, the, the equation did shift to like you haven't been here before. You want to be here. That's fair, but one was right in right. Lance. Yeah. Um, but two one ones. one had a didn't live too far sure. from Bush Stadium, which was helpful. And in two or the third one in, in Sunny Gray, I think he just had a lot of positive experiences when he would visit St. Louis as a visiting player. And so. Um, Living in Nashville, I think this was something that was very attractive to him and something that he wanted to do. Do you feel that that's like a tangible thing? Like if they want to be here, that makes you connect, or that makes the rebound quicker? If that makes it like, how does that tie together? The notion that like, last year was an outlier, this, these guys can help us get better. And what role does that play beyond just like their skill? Well, certainly skill matters right. and it's very relevant. Um, but we also do want people that, that want to be part of this community, the St. Louis community, and I think that's important. And, you know, like, we have had times where we've had players that end up signing here that they don't find that, that comfort in the community or, or, or maybe um, as welcoming as others. And, you know, hopefully that, that bridge has already been crossed and these guys know exactly what they're getting into. What would you talk about the way the health might impact the roster? Shortstop an area where maybe you all would to suit depth even still at this point in the spring, given where Tommy's at and where Donnie's at, kind of in the rehab as well? Yeah, I think uh, we'll, we'll be a little bit more organic than just necessarily trying to uh, run after something at the moment. But, you know, as time goes on, we'll have a much better sense of where Tommy's at. We'll have a much better sense of, of who else we think could, could backfill there. But obviously, uh, you know, Mason Wynn's going to get a lot of opportunity there. I mean, the bigger question is, is, you know, can he remain healthy throughout camp? Well, when you look at rosters coming into camp, sometimes it's a really open, competitive roster, sometimes not so much. It seems this year that you guys have most of your positions set, relatively speaking. Is there anything outside of the bullpen that you find that might be competitive in terms of this final spot? Well, I do think the answer is yes. I do think there is real competition at some position player spots and also when you're starting to fill out your 40 man ro or your 26 man roster. So none of that's set in stone yet. And as we just touched on, health's going to matter and dictate, you know, where some people fall into all of that. But, you know, there is some uncertainty on what our everyday lineup will look like when we get to opening day. Now, over the next couple weeks, month we should have more clarity in that but i do think there 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 are guys in this room today over the next three or four weeks that are going to get a lot of opportunity to show where they're at hey mo when you look at the uh team what attributes uh give you confidence that you can win in the playoffs what attributes are you excited you're ready to go very presumptuous. Um, oh, that you'll make the playoffs, right? right? Like well, in right. terms of like, I think like you know, when you sit in my seat or you're part of this team, you you know you have to go out and day one start proving yourself. Um, in terms of how you think we're set up for October, I definitely think someone like a Sonny Gray can definitely be you know an opener um, and and take that game one, which is you know important. I think the overall depth of this team, the ability to score runs getting back to the things that we are traditionally good at, defense, base running, and the core. Um, I think, you know, our everyday club feels like it could be a very strong October team. So what were your conversations like with Lance Lynn? You know, last season was kind of a rough one for him, uh, you know, two spots, home run ball was, what was the conversation with you believing that he still has a lot left and him thinking he still has a lot to give? 
Well, I think a couple things. One is, you know, he's a very confident man. He understands that last year there were some things that he was probably doing that he should have gotten away from sooner. And, um, you know, hopefully from a coaching standpoint, from a strategic standpoint, those are things we can walk through. Um, he's cr certainly open-minded to it. He's very understanding that those things existed. I think he would tell you that, that you know, he fell in love with trying to throw that sweeper slider probably a little bit too much. Um, so making those adjustments, making those uh, um, changes, I think will get him back to where he needs to be. Still has the arm strength, still has that fastball that's tough to hit. And, you know, like we want to do with a lot of people in this camp is do what you're good at mm -hmm. and keep doing it. Hey, Mo, when you look at Paul Goldschmidt, obviously his, if you will, regular numbers were down. But if you look at, of course, some of the advanced stats, the batted balls, it, it, it's encouraging, I suppose. In, in your own words, can you describe your, your thoughts about Paul going into the season knowing those stats? Yeah, I think a, a lot was made out of, of last year, you know, we understood he was coming off an MVP year the, the year prior, and, and there's certainly expectations or understanding that there could be some regression. And, you know, I do feel like there's probably some happy median in there, but, you know, I, I think he's still an amazing talent, incredible teammate, and, uh, you know, when you look at this club, I mean, he's one of the, you know, true glue of it. And so seeing uh, him in camp will be great, and uh, expectations for him are high, but we're also being reasonable. Oh, you're starting oh. pitching rotation projected is, I think, the oldest in the major leagues, or at least one of them. Is that is age a concern, or is it the, the effects of age, or are you not concerned at all with having, having guys that are all over 30? Well, unlike our upcoming election, I am not overly concerned with age in this current state. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but so, but so I, I do feel like what we missed a lot last year was more experience. And, and so, you know, trying to take or uh, tie age and, and, and experience together usually is pretty common. Um, and, and so going down that path, we knew that was likely where we were going to end up. Um, Although there's age associated with the rotation, what do you make of just the, the durability, like the kind of the workhorse attributes of some of the, the pitchers that you obviously went out and targeted, maybe sort of as a result of uh, kind of having to use a bunch of different arms last year, just the durability of the guys you got. <laughs> kind of the results yeah. of life. <laughs> Factual. Um, no, I think like like that was something that we talked about really back when we did the press conferences in, in late November. It's just guys that understand the what it's like to go pole to pole, the understanding of what it's like to have to take the ball 30 starts. And, you know, all of these guys have been through that. They understand it. And that's just going to be really helpful, too, with some of our younger pitchers that are trying to get to that point. And so I think from, you know, the aspect of just mentoring, helping teach, coach, but also the fact that they've done it is helpful. Well, well, you can contrast that approach with the rotation versus what you then did with the bullpen. Um, you know, the rotation is guys who have been there and done that. And veteran guys, even like the addition of Matt Carpenter adds that to the bench, mm -hmm. but in the bullpen, not a whole lot of experience, not a whole lot of familiarity, even with the roles you might put them in. Yeah, Some I think, of them not I, been in the majors. I think it's, uh, well, I, I, I would say like adding like, you know, Kittredge and, and sure. Middleton bring some level of experience. Okay. I think like when you start to like weigh in, like where does, where do you go from like a young player to someone that has like experience? I feel like a guy like a Tommy Edmond for us, for example, is someone that is flipping the script now from just someone that is somewhat younger, contributing, but now someone who can help invest in others as a player. And do I know Kittredge and Middleton on a personal level? No, but I also have heard really good things about them. And you know, my conversation with with Kittredge after we traded for him, I mean, you know, it just sounded like you were talking to an adult, like someone that was, you know, just giving you the straight shot. Excited to be here. So I do think there's a little bit more experience than you might be giving us credit for. Okay. But you also have to understand, like these are all, you know, subject to market negotiations and where things go. It wasn't like we were trying to avoid going down that path, but this is where we ended up. Oh, do you have an update on Tommy Edmond or how he's? progressing it's been we talked to you about him in, in January where is he now that he's here in Jupiter um, he's cleared to do a lot of baseball activities but I think one place where it'll be a little bit slower is a throwing and B hitting but there's a progression plan in place and we'll just see how that goes as uh, spring unfolds
there's a lot of older guys with track records who are looking for bounce back seasons. What's the comfort level that most, if not all, of these guys can have those kind of years? Who are the guys you're referring to? Paul Goldschmidt, Nolan Arnato, Miles Michaelis, Matt Carpenter. Okay, so, okay, I thought you meant guys required. But um, I feel like, um, you know, all these guys are like uber talented, right? Um, I think last year when our season didn't go as we were hoping it would go, I think a lot of pressure was put on individuals to try to do more than they really could or um, should. The, the really the theme of this camp is is forget about last year. This is a new, and just be yourself because these guys are super talented. So I think the belief we have in where these gentlemen are at their stages in their career are still where they are all star caliber type players. Most specifically with with uh, Michaelis, what what sort of things do you guys feel like? give you confidence that last year was just one of those years as opposed to a start of something, maybe like a downturn or something? Well, I think like Michaelis, when he's at his best, where's the ball? On the ground, the ground. right? And, and that's what he needs to just get back to. And, you know, if we see that early, I think that's a really encouraging sign. If we don't, then we got to make some adjustments. Mo, Jim asked earlier about the starting depth. In regards to Libby and Zach specifically, what does the roadmap for their spring look like? And where do you all come to a decision point in terms of what they might give you in the rotation versus what maybe you're a little more confident they can give you in the bowl? Well, I think uh, early on, these guys are going to get a lot of opportunity to get innings. Um, there'll be a strategy in place on how we use all these. Um, I think you get, we, we start with a split to open, so we're going to need innings right away, bless you. Um, but, you know, I think as, as camp unfolds, we'll determine like where their roles end up. But, um, you know, we don't know today because it could be in the rotation. I mean, is it too simplistic to say that for those two guys, this spring could be a determiner of kind of where their career paths go? Because both of them have provided for you out of the bullpen. Both of them have been a little more yeah, even as starters. Yeah, I wouldn't agree with that statement. Okay. Do you, uh, do you start with a six-man rotation because you got, what, eight games in a row? We, we are debating it, but I don't know if that's what we'll do. Because a lot of these guys would prefer to be on five. Sure. Yeah. What, uh, um, other than Packy and Middleton, you said, has the stomach virus. So are there any pitchers that are behind? Uh, not that I've been told. Okay. Have you noticed anything? Oh, I thought we were done. I was so close. Yeah, just anything. anything. And gave me the walk. I know. I thought we were done, too. Uh, yeah. You mentioned seeing the way Sonny was out there performing uh, and vocal and all that stuff. Is there anything else just leading up to the camp out here that you've seen that's either impressed you or surprised you? Um, I would say just the energy and in, in the sense of like a lot of guys are coming in here, they understand the urgency and I think anybody that was a part of this organization last year is just happy that we're not in last year. So, you know, it's, it's starting fresh.